Hey, this is final. I just wanted to say how much I appreciate people like the adorable Madeline, my regular, my regular viewers, the people who are always, always on top of my videos. The, the few I have, anyways. It's always interesting. I'm, I'm always trying to keep it interesting. And uh, thank you, Sebastian, as well. You know, it's interesting the things that manifest themselves in dreams and the things that happen because of stress. The, ma the brain uh, manifests what it needs to see in order to get over that stress. Shows you what you need to show. You see loved ones and things happening to loved ones that you don't want to happen. Uh, I remember I've seen my little puppy get ran over by a car and I just yelled as loud as I could in the dream and in real life, you know, he's still silly and alive and yesterday, you know, he jumped up on the couch and I, I was like, oh, hi, and he turns around, puts his butt in my face, farts, and then runs off. <laughs> That's funny. It's like a little human baby, but, uh, you know, he's still alive and well. Some things, it's, it's really, you're seeing it because the body's relating it to th other things that have happened to show you what could happen it's it's like it's like possible directions that you could go in the fourth dimension if you've seen my other video I describe how in the fourth dimension uh, as in this dimension we have a four dimensional body but we operate in a three dimensional world you know we have four dimensions front back side left side right side you know but in a four-dimensional world, there'd have to be an extra, which would be time. Um, time would have to be the extra side. B meaning that time would have to be an entire lifetime. And everything's overlapping each other. and Which is why you would perceive things from windows that could quickly alternate. Because all the timelines are mixed together. But... It's a lot like that in the sense that anything that you've been through, anything that you've seen on TV can relate or, or be perceived in a manner that you need to see it in. All possible directions that you could go, which is a fifth dimensional constant uh, concept where all options are presented, meaning an uh, infinite array of possibilities. Which is why the fifth dimension is um, physical placement. God damn, it's, it's always wet out here, Jesus. Anyways, uh, you know, I, I've had some interesting dreams. And I always think it would be interesting if people would just post up their dreams on YouTube. Because, you know, if you have an interesting dream, that can really, you know, there's so much to analyze. It's kind of like being in a whole nother world. And there's just, it's, it's like a fantasy. Anything's possible. Because in dreams, there's so much going on. There's so many different reasons why the dream is happening. Things that have happened to you in the past. Things that have happened in the future. It's just a combination of everything. It's, it's basically everything from the fourth dimension. It's everything that has happened. <clears throat> it's a different sense of spirituality than you are in the current physical form. And I know that may seem a little uh, bit of a cliché. But it makes sense. It's just common sense, you know. Common sense are things that just click. Things that you already know that you just don't realize. I have a dream that I'll never forget. It was, um, it was interesting because it was, it was a combination of things from current life knowledge. And then there were things in it that I've literally never seen or been involved with in my life before. And it was another one of those dreams that I've had that was in color. I know a lot of people say it takes a lot of imagination to dream in color. I gotta tell you, I've never dreamed in black and white. Never. I've always dreamed in color. And a lot of people say they've almost never dreamed in color. They only dream in black and white. And they say only really creative people can dream in color. I don't think it's that I'm creative. I think it's just that I'm so spiritual. I'm always, whenever I go to sleep, I'm always trying to work with my dream. I'm always trying to be able to change it. I'm always trying to be able, being able to manipulate it as best I can. <clears throat> or try to get involved with it. So that way I can try to figure out what's going on in the dream. So I can try to retain it when I wake up. But that's just who I am. And in this dream, 
I remember I met with these giants. They weren't human, but they had human like features from the size that I was. I mean, they were so much larger than me. It was really hard. They, for all I know, they could have been dinosaurs because the way they were built and how large they were, they were like the size, uh, how big of a building? I'd say about like a six story building, like pretty large. To the point where when I look up at them, they just seem to get smaller and smaller as they get to their head, you know what I'm saying? Because they're, they're, they're just that big. I remember they had brown skin. And, and it wasn't scaly, but you know how like our skin, when you look at it, you see the little fracture lines and the wrinkles? It was like that. But they didn't have like, they only had like three toes. And their feet, their feet weren't, their feet were more like a lizard's feet. Because they, they were more round-like, and they had claws on them. And they were big, but they weren't scaly, you know? They had the figure of a person. You know, arms, legs, uh, hands. I couldn't really tell what their main features were because I was so much smaller than them. <laughs> that, to me, it was really hard to tell. I mean, if you ever put your head on the ground and you look up at somebody, to you, that person could be... They could be 10 feet tall, or they could be... 20 feet tall, they could be 50 feet tall. I was just that much smaller. They had to be at least the size of a T Rex. And there was quite a few of them all around me, and I was surrounded in some kind of enclosure. It was huge. It was kind of like a fencing with a, a giant bush going around it. But the grass, you know, the grass was normal size, there was little shrubs all around me and such. And then there was like large giant trees. You know, everything was so different because there were certain features that seemed like natural here and then other features that were just out of proportion. And I remember leaning up against the claw when I was stuck because when they stepped, it was like it shook me. So I, I, I leaned up against the claw of their foot because it was about uh, waist high it's pretty large and and I was like what the heck and I look and it's like oh my god look at that claw and I just start to run and I look back at them and they're all looking at me with their block like heads they weren't like people's heads or like lizard's heads it was the weirdest part they were actually like blocks but I don't want to say blocks as in like the little cartoon characters with the block it was more like it was just like when their neck went up to their head it didn't, there was no variation, it just kept going straight up, like they were all one piece with arms and legs coming out, you know what I'm saying? It was like there was no chin, there was no variation in their head, it was just a large dome going over, you know, there was no neck, there was no chest. It was just like arms and legs coming out of some weird looking thing that has a face on the top of it. <laughs> they weren't wearing clothes or anything. It was very odd. I remember in the background, I remember seeing like a large facility that they were standing by. And it didn't have doors or anything. But but I remember there was like there was like they were like coming halfway through the wall. Like the wall was like invisible. But it was there. It's hard to make sense. It's hard to explain it. I remember it when I saw that when I looked back. And so I kept running. I kept running. And I saw like a little opening in the fence. Like a ripped out piece. Like somebody like, like a big animal bit it. And I just climbed through there. And I started climbing through. And I heard a loud roar. And there was, I was looking. I looked up at the bushes that were all around me. And I was just sort of navigating through the bushes. It wasn't like a labyrinth. You know, it, I remember I remember it felt like a labyrinth, but it didn't look like a rat labyrinth because I couldn't find my way out. But uh, it wasn't like what a labyrinth would look like. It was just like you're inside a big bush where there were certain part of, parts of it 
that were that were covered up and you just couldn't go around it. It was all tanglement and mess. If you've ever tried to go, run through a forest, you'll understand what I mean. And I, and I had this dream before I ever even had been through a forest or any of those sort of things. I had it back when I was like 12 years old. I was just a little kid and I just started living with my dad. I st that was after I had gotten my life turned around. And um, I remember looking up, and through the crack of the bushes, I saw something land. And it had large, it, it had large wings, and it kind of looked like a rock. It kind of looked rock-like. And now that I think about it, the giants were kind of rock-like looking. That's what their color was. It was a brown, but it was kind of like a rock. It was very solid looking. It, it was. It had the cracks in it and everything, like skin wood, but it was so incredibly solid looking. And I hate to make this sound like. I think this might have been something from uh, from something I've seen, because it looked like a gargoyle. Uh, <laughs> and you know, you sometimes you gotta wonder what some of those great societies were thinking when they made the gargoyles. So maybe the gargoyles were something real. Maybe that was one of the species that came here. And it could have been a figment of someone's imagination. But, you know, and the, the dream continued on to where I, I found myself and, and uh, you know, how, remember when I was telling you about shifting things going on in the fourth dimension well I had a shift go on when I was trying to navigate through and I shifted into a completely different area a uh, different window you know that I could see and all of a sudden I was um, at like a carnival like thing it was probably a completely different form of time and uh, you know, from then on it was quite normal I've had dream I've had a dream or two about being abducted by the Greys, but it wasn't like an abduction. I was just there. It wasn't really like being abducted. It was a dream of uh being in their ship. A large or I don't know, some kind of facility. It was something. Uh, maybe I was on the moon. Um, I I just remember like, you know, they were a lot taller than me. I remember I didn't make direct eye contact with them. Um, and I've had a lot of different interesting dreams. Recently, I was in my dream state, and I was actually trying to manifest. I went ahead, and um, I told myself, okay, I want to open up a new window. And as soon as I thought that, I was at this graveyard-looking place, where everything was dark, and uh, the soil was, you know, dusty. Um, it wasn't foggy, but... Uh, there was very little life. It was more of like a burnt light color of everything, and there was only a little, a few green plants starting to grow back. Uh, you could see the little leaves coming up here and there. And there was off in the distance, it was, it was nighttime, so there were some dark bushes off in the distance. You could see them. Um, and once there, I started thinking, okay, I want all my loved ones to come forth now and I turn around and out of the empty space that I came out of people started to come through they started to step through little by little first it was like three people then it was like four or five coming through and the groups just got larger and larger as they were coming through some of them were paired together like in families um, people all of the same age though uh, almost like I remembered them at their best all being the same age um, some of the people were really old some of the people were really young some people were just children uh, some people were you know adults there there was um, a few animals uh, I remember seeing a horse a dog a wolf I remember seeing a fox, and uh, I never, I didn't see any cats, which was surprising, because you know, I've had some good cats, but, oh well. 
Um, and, you know, I started, I started seeing a lot of people coming through, and they were starting to walk around, check out the place. I turned around, and I thought, okay, let's check out this place. Let's see everything that's here. And I thought to myself, okay, I need a quicker way to travel than walking. I want to fly. I need to fly. I need to get a good overview. And I looked off in the distance, and I saw a big factory-like thing. It was a, shaped like a dome. And it was all blasted out looking. And I was like, oh, I gotta get over there. So so I thought to myself, okay, lift up. Go up. Up, 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 up. Come on, up. Come on, up. And I just thought harder and harder. And I started to go up. And eventually I was flying. And I was, I was manifesting. I was manifesting myself doing things. Ricky himself, he, he's manifested his own home in a dream once. It's, it's interesting the things that you can manifest and once you've manifested them you, you can come back to them later on as long as you still have the ability that you had when you made it and it, it's a lot of fun it's, it's, it's actually interesting and me and all these people we flew off and we started checking out the place uh, some people started like a party of some sort it was weird I don't know why they they just they, they they manifested a disco ball because you know in the dream world you're working with a lot of other people it's not you're not the only one there that's why people have shared dreams people have shared dreams because sometimes they call upon each other and they both you know they both go there and they're both still they're both in the current realm alive and so i've had that you know I, i've had a good friend that in a dream, I wanted to hang out with him, so I was there with him. And we, you know, we spent the day together hanging out and running away from evil things and stuff like that. I've seen things that were probably from his lifetime. They probably have nothing to do with my um, spiritual ser serial number, whatever you want to call it. And afterwards, you know, when we hung out the next day, I told him about my dream. And he said, yeah, I had the same dream. You were right there with me. Weird. I thought that was just something. I thought that was just me. And I was, I was like, no. I remember seeing you too. I remember hanging out with you the whole time. And we started talking about everything that happened in the dream. He knew exactly what I went through. And he, I told him about my mom. And that's why my mom was, was trying to attack us at at a certain point. And, you know, he was telling me about about the uh, the large dogs that he had when he was a little kid and that's why the, my mom was holding those dogs like on a leash you know, it, it was all put together basically our our lives it's interesting but getting back to my current my recent dream where I manifested flying uh, we went ahead and we checked out that factory it, it was all you know, it was all smoky, and you could see the machinery inside of it. And I was looking at the walls, and I remember the walls weren't like, they're some, they were like in panels, attached to what looked like, like bone. And it's interesting because in dreams, people will manifest whatever they need to see in order to get by in life, to get rid of stress. Or, you know, when life's going really good, they show things that they need to see to remind themselves who they are and, you know, what kind of life they're living. Shadow, get over here. Come here. Let's go. Good boy. And this time, it was something that I manifested. I took people into my world. And in my world, there was this building... I have never seen before and not only did it have machinery and metal parts in it but it was also made out of bone that was the most interesting part big panels of bone it was it was like they took bone marrow grinded it up and somehow reanimated the bone marrow into a shape or if that was possibly a piece of skeleton from some large creature but there was bone in with the in with the metal in with the construction of the building that was all destroyed and there was just debris everywhere and I, th I think it's interesting how 
I could see something like that that you would never, never, ever see in a TV show or anything like that. But if you think about it, a lot of ideas people get for these TV shows and such, even if you do see something that you've seen in a TV show before or in a cartoon or in a movie, how much you want to bet that they got that idea from a dream they had, from something that happened to them in a past life? I've had a lot of my ideas from when I was writing my book that came straight from my dreams. They had nothing to do with my life. And they're all things that have never happened before, that have never been seen before, things that I have never seen before. Do you think I've actually known, do you think in this lifetime I met somebody named Antilino who, who was a humanoid with, with big floppy ears? No. Do you think I've ever seen a place that looked like a desert with giant domes on it that had these tubes coming up with, 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 it's sort of bubbles coming out of them. And in these bubbles, people were coming to the ground and they popped and they were wearing suits. But they weren't space suits, they were just like regular clothes. But they looked special, you know, all one piece. And the people were all meeting up at different domes and they were all going to each other's domes. And they just like, they come up to the dome and they just walk through it. And then they could take off their suits and such. You'd think I came up with that? From real life experience, real life things that I've seen, when the hell have you seen something like that? I can't even imagine something that creative. I, I had to, I had to use my dreams. All, most of my ideas come from dreams that I've ever had. So with this, I conclude. Even if some bad disaster is to come, or if a good change. Either way, there is no such thing as an end or destruction. There's only a transfer. Transfer of how things are run. Because everyone are all going to the same place. But speaking of disasters like earthquakes, if you live on the west coast of America, uh, places like California, scientists have predicted that that's next to be hit by an earthquake from the um, coming out of the Pacific on that, on that edge and um, if you're going to get hit I advise you it would be a really good idea to make, make a backpack get a backpack fill it with um, let's see a change of clothes put just a small change of clothes in there underwear, shirt, pants, that's it just in case. Um, put food like granola bars in there. Uh, things that are going to last a long time. Food that has like no expiration date. Water. Uh, put a piece of rope in there. It needs to be like 20 feet long. However long you think it might need to be to get on top of a nearby tall roof. Because let's face it. If you have a tsunami, it's most likely only going to go... Uh, the one in Japan only went about five miles in, five, six miles in. So if you live further than five or six miles from the coast, then all you really need to worry about is the flood. And the flood's going to be huge because it's coming straight from the aftermath. So it's going to be like at least 10 feet tall. So you want to get on your roof or get on the highest point that you can find and you want to find the highest point in your area so that you can figure out okay do I need a ladder if I need rope how long does it need to be and why rope because if you climb up on the roof and you don't have a, a ladder or anything you climb up using duct work or something else you know you find a different way to get on the roof you're going to need to pull everybody else to, up to the roof so that's what you have the rope for. You throw the rope down, and then everybody else can start climbing up it. Uh, don't rely on grappling hooks because, you know, unless you're a ninja, <laughs> I don't think you're going to have the skills. You have to be winning. Like Charlie Sheen. Yeah, right. Joke. He's a joke. Anyways, other things that need to go inside that bag. 
They, they, they advise you to have a flashlight, but come on. That's just going to weigh you down. That's a waste. You're not going to need a freaking flashlight, okay? You have instincts. You can rely on those. You want to put in there a battery-operated radio, so that way you can hear about what's going on. Um, if you want, you can buy walkie-talkies, too. You might need them to communicate with your family and such. And if you have, like, uh, what's going on in Japan, where if you have, like, a nuclear power plant anywhere nearby, and you have to worry about things like a tsunami destroying them, um, it would probably be important to have a gas mask, a good one. Something that you can at least wear to avoid um, just any low levels of gas and try to get away as quick as possible. And if you have the money, you can go ahead and buy a skin and skin protection, you know, like a, a suit, an eye protection. If you have pets, you might want to put pet food in there. Maybe put some cash in there. Um, for any sort of transportation you're going to need. And, and uh, things like important family documents, you know, just, there's, there's a lot of things that you could put in there that's not really necessary. You don't, you're not necessarily going to need a heavy, big heavy fire extinguisher, you know. Or things like a paper and pencil. If you want, you could put like a book in there though. Um, but really, the things that are important or like the radio because you don't want to hear the siren and then not have not be ready you want to be able to just grab your backpack grab your loved ones and go 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 up to the highest point as quick as possible and wait for and turn on your radio for further instructions you know find out if you're going to be getting uh helicopters or whatever just to hear whatever's going on with with the situation or the government what if the government announces something that they're going to do for the people and that's that's really the more important part of it or that's more important than the clothes or anything else it's just having that alone um the backpack idea is really just so that way you have everything all set up if there's anything you might want to drag along with you but remember, whatever you put in that backpack is that much more weight that you have to carry. Climbing up that rope or, or climbing up the side of a building, which, you know, it can be done. You can climb up, I can climb up almost anything. Uh, you just need to find pipes or, or, or different things to grab onto. You'd be amazed how good we are at climbing when our lives depend on it. And for all this information and more... You can go ahead and go on the internet and go to www.ready.gov for more information. Ready.gov talks about all the different things you could do to prepare yourself for an emergency. Except for the gas mask, that was my idea. And let's see, another good thing to have is a go ahead and talk with your family about a place to go. If a disaster does strike and one of you are, are at work and the kid's at school, talk about where you guys would meet up. Um, maybe like a big hill that you all could go to. Uh, a place that you could all go if you had to rush, 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 rush to meet each other. A place where you could all meet. Try your best to meet. Uh, if you're hearing sirens while you're asleep, then you know you're all going to be together. Oh, and another quick thing. Nah, 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 nah. I don't want to get into that. I have to do some more research before I conclude my theories on this idea I have. <clears throat> it's an interesting idea, but uh. I need to do a little bit more reading on it, just to confirm myself. Anyways, uh, thank you for listening. This is final here. That's how I scare my dog off. If he tries to lick me, I just go right in his face, spit all over him. <laughs> Alright.